So, Lindsay, in terms of that forward demand, we're looking at the government just this week saying that in 2022-2023, they're expecting it to come off significantly. And in terms of the construction side, are you anticipating that perhaps 12 months from now, two years from now, that we are going to see a significant downturn because of that demand pressure? Look, well, that's the concern. We need to get, as I said, immigration going and get the students coming back in. Uh, without that, then, you know, without that, immigra- without that growth in population, you're not going to see the demand in, in housing. I mean, we are seeing some other shifts, which are really quite interesting at the moment. You know, people are moving out of the cities into the country areas. Obviously, the people have realised they can work anywhere. There's a fair bit of rental vacancy in apartment buildings, so I think that sector will be a bit slow going forward. And they've had a very good run over the last few years. Uh, but as I said, we just need to get that immigration and those students coming back in to, to put some, you know, real strength in the outer years. I just wanted to touch on energy as with you as well, because I remember the last time we spoke, energy prices was one of the, the big drivers of your decision to move a lot of your capex to the United States. We've seen some pretty significant action on the way of the government over the past couple of weeks. Do you think that they're really doing enough in terms of energy pricing to help Australian manufacturers at the moment? Well, look, it's a real, it's a great first step. Um, you know, we really need to have something done there that the prices of gas you know, or a, a sort of north of 9 or $10, depending where you are on, in Australia. You know, in the United States, we're paying, you know, $2.50 US. So it's a significant difference between the two countries in the price of energy. And um, it was completely, the price has been completely out of kilter with what the international price is. And it just, and the, and the market wasn't functioning. And so the government had to step in. If you've got non-functioning market, it's, it's important that the government steps in and takes action. Talk to us about the demand story then in North America. You were just touching on Australia before. Are you seeing a big disparity in the outlook when it comes to North America versus what you are seeing in Australia? Well, it's interesting because some of the trends are staying. We're seeing over there that people are also moving out of the cities and into regional areas and they're moving into house, detached houses and bigger houses. And that side of the market is up you know, quite significantly. Depending on where you are, it's from you know, 25 to 100% increase. But in the cities, once again, we're finding that construction's been held um, you know, back by uh, like county regulations or state government regulations. And a lot of jobs have been you know, delayed, deferred, cancelled. Uh, and so you know, we need to get through this um, you know, difficult period in the, in the, in the pandemic for that uh, construction of uh, non-residential and high-rise residential to kick back in.